I won't ask the question. And thank you guys. Thank you, Grabs, for joining me. Two zero week. I guess that was expected from you guys. Uh, yeah, kinda. I mean, we expected growing pains in the beginning, but our schedule was not the hardest this week without being disrespectful. Mm -hmm. So we can expect that to zero. Um, I think overall we can be happy with the games, even though they didn't look as clean as last year, but of course it's a new roster. Yeah, you're improving and yet you did the role swap. We'll talk about this a bit later in the interview, but I want to know, tell me about the mindset of G2 coming back in the LEC as world's finalist. Uh, the mindset is pretty much that we still believe we are kind of heads and shoulders above the competition and you want to be that. So working towards that and ultimately you want to win worlds still. Um, and we learned a lot from last year about how we should structure the entire year. Because even though we felt we had like off weeks, we didn't scrim and we had more free time, it still didn't prevent the burnout in the end. So we kind of had to find new structures and I think we have a better idea now how to approach the whole year. Can you tell me a bit more about this? What did you learn as a coach personally after the 3-0? Um, I mean, it's really hard to find the balance between trying to improve during the worlds and t still being relaxed. Um, because of training for six weeks and only for Worlds and then suddenly um, towards the end the energy goes out. So I think just having a healthy environment in terms of fitness and also just allowing yourself not to only practice and say, okay guys, we're in Paris now one week before Worlds, but let's go and visit Disneyland together or something um, to like get out of the hotel. Okay, and I know that the coaching staff changed, but we'll talk about it a bit later. But I want to know, fast forward 2020, we know that Caps and Perks wall swapped. What do you think about it? as we had two games on stage to see it? Um, I think they're just very similar. So in the end, I don't think um, the end product will be different. I think we have a chance to be better than before. Um, we expect ourselves to lose some games because of course both have to go back to the roles or caps us to learn how to be in mid, especially as a three-man team in mid. In mid game could be um, a bit rough for him. It was the same for Perks as well in the beginning, so we allow ourselves the time. And I think in the end, we're gonna be the same G2 like last year. Who had the idea of doing that? Uh, I don't think who began, because both were kind of like bickering back and forth the entire year, like, ah, you played it so bad, I could play it better, and I know you're playing it bad. And then I think they just said, like, I could do it better, I can do it better, okay, let's swap, okay. Um, so yeah, I think it's just like free flowing, and um, we also said that if it should not work out, which can happen, we can always go back. And both like the challenge, and they like to try new things, um, so both are happier, and the entire team happier. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask, because when you're another team, it can be confusing, and you're like, okay, Am I going to play against Perks? Am I going to play against Cavs? So is it going to be a permanent thing or you just want to play with teams and what they shouldn't expect from you guys? The plan is for it to be permanent for the year. And I think we as a team still define ourselves how we play pressure. Like it doesn't matter who's mid, it doesn't matter who's bot. As long as we actually play together and um, towards objectives, which in the beginning right now, the other game is pretty bad in the first two games. Um, it's growing pains, but ultimately I don't think it affects anybody and we could swap whenever. But um, for now we want to give Caps the time to learn um, bot lane and purpose to go back in mid. Mm, and I, I think he can help him because he used to be mid laner who swapped bot lanes. So I guess they can help each other in this process. But now last question for you. I recall last year you were, you were praising the coaching staff, especially Duffman, but I know you added some more members to the coaching staff. Can you tell me a bit more about this? Um, so pretty much Duffman and me were like a two-man army. And um, it was kind of funny to see, compare ourselves to other coaching staffs when suddenly 10 people rock up and we're like, there's two and like, okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, again, I, I, flee, I only press with Duffman. Um, by far the best um, assistant in the West, I would say. I don't know about Korean and Chinese um, assistant coaches. But we want to add something more to the um, players. For example, some data work that can be done um, just during the structure that helps Duffman to focus on something else. Um, so just kind of bolster our, our strength there and allow him, like Duffman, to actually do stuff he's better at instead of everything. Um, I mean, everything in terms of scouting and data work, um, he showed a lot there. So mainly for him, okay. that's the whole um, coaching staff now. All right, well, best team and best duo to make the best work with G2, I hope. Thank you very much for the insights. Thanks and congrats me. on the first week. And to wrap up this first week of the LEC, we're going to send it back to PGL. Take it away, Shucks. Thank you very much, my dear, and welcome to the LEC post-game lobby. After our first week of the LEC, we're back and we had all our games already. That means we have a lot to talk about. I'm Shox, joined by Yamato Cannon and Mickey. Congratulations. Thank you. 2-0. Um, so can you give you yourself like a report card for the team for the first weekend and why? Um, out of 10, let's say. Okay, out of 10, I'm going to say like 6. Oh. Five, five point five. I think that's right. What's the homework? 
Um, me not anything. <laughs> I was really running it this week, but it's like, I guess it's kind of a classic now. Every spring starts, <laughs> I just run it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, our early game needs some work. Especially yesterday, we were like really losing heart. Today was a little bit better, but we still entered bot. So yeah. Um, about the early game, this morning, this afternoon, <laughs> we get up late, we're gamers. Uh, on Ready Check, Vedius and Yamato were talking about the fact that um, we look at you 2 and we don't look at like just a week's performance, but we look at the past as well. And if there's things that were issues in the past, if they're still persisting. For instance, citing, well, world final, troubles in early game getting a bit run over. But do you think that's fair or should we also reset like you guys reset for this year? I mean, it's kind of fair, but I think in the final it was mostly due to our level ones. Mm -hmm. That's why we also tried some level ones today. We like invaded and uh -huh. stuff. Usually we were just like chilling level one, you know, and <laughs> if any team does something, then we get surprised like, oh, they're doing something and then they get like some kind of a head start. But now we're just kind of flipping it, you know, maybe we just fight level <laughs> one and then see what happens. <laughs> should, we, should we try it out? Because in LPL, whenever there's like, there's always level one fights or like mm -hmm. the teams always do something level one. So I think that's the advantage that they had coming to the final as well. Um, but also just in general, like early games, like even after level one, they're really good at snowballing it. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you guys are not bad at snowballing. It's just that sometimes you don't seem to. Like yesterday, it took a while to get the action done versus yeah. Mad Lions, and then they ran over you. Was that a surprise? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I was like thinking, like, oh, sh oh. That's well, okay. <laughs> we were like, so Fnatic last year was in World Finals, and then they had a poor start to the spring. So we're like, oh, is it the same have, have oh. happening to us? But yeah, then I, then I press tab and I see my Senna has zero deaths and he has two items and like 60 souls. So I was like, hey, this, it's over. It's <laughs> over. It's really not bad. And it was 2-0. Uh, let's talk yeah. a little bit about this game versus uh, SK Gaming. Um, yeah, I think it was, it didn't seem like you were in trouble, but us as a broadcast team, we're trying to look at how clean the victories are. And I think that's a bit unfair because it's the first week. Uh, Yamato, what would you say? Honestly, like, you know, the first game you guys played and also this one, there was some like slip ups. But then I remembered, you know, last split, like even playing against you guys, like we were ahead. Like I remember like uh, Cabo was, yeah, Pike Yumi, <laughs> we were super far ahead. And then like we just lost in 20 <laughs> minutes. So it's like being ahead against G2 is kind of meaningless sometimes, you know? That's what's the frustrating part about mm -hmm. facing them. Because I think you guys identify better than anyone what you guys need to do in order to win. Similar like last, I, I think yesterday was the perfect example of it. I think executing team fights is super freaking difficult. And if there was any other team playing your team comp, I think they wouldn't succeed. Like when you had the flank, you remember the Drake, that was yeah. beautiful. Like yeah. what was going on in terms of communication in that moment? How do you set this up? Huh? Well, usually we just like, well, whoever can flank usually looks for a flank. And usually like if you have a champ like Kiana or this game we had like Lee Sin that wants to insect someone or even Rakan, usually person that has the tools mm. needs to look for the flank or whatever the win condition is to win the team fight. Um, I think yesterday's game uh, was the one that it was Infer before Infernal Drake. Yeah, yeah, it's like so you were setting the that Arnold. Up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, that was really funny. <laughs> but uh, I, I like that yesterday when uh, my can of like, do you remember when he flashed over the wall and waited one second? He was just standing still and then he pressed ult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, yeah. Yeah. That was like that was an some, anime moment. That yeah. was some crazy <laughs> team fighting <laughs> skills, yeah. For sure. But yeah, I'm not sure. We just like call targets, I guess. I was playing Nautilus, so I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna press Aaron Aphelios and hopefully you guys kill him, you know? <laughs> and I just walk up to him and like, he does. Like so. Very nice. There Very we nice. go. Yeah, your, um, your voice comms, if we heard them on broadcast like last year, it was like, it, there wasn't a lot of setup. You just all kind of instantaneously think the same thing and that's how it happens. So let's yeah. see if that's the same uh, this year. The Kia player of the game was Jankos with 46% of the votes. You were in there as well. I think it was Perks, Jankos, Mickey. So do you think you were robbed again? No. <laughs> no? Because <laughs> you were into it? Yeah, I was kind of running it. I mean, Jankos was playing pretty Everyone well. Everyone was into it a little bit, but like, yeah. there's like controlled inting, and then there's, oh my god, we're going to lose the game. That's true. But yeah. uh, Perks did go deathless, so yeah. maybe we should have gone to him, because deathless games happen very rarely in our team. <laughs> like yesterday was caps, it was like yes. one in a million, and then <laughs> <laughs> there was Perks. So yeah, maybe next time it's me, and then usually whoever is deathless should probably get the image. Should get it, okay. Uh, speaking about caps, our topic kind of for PGL is how you carry caps. Because um, we needed a headline, you know. Yeah. Um, but it is so, so interesting. So we have a bunch of questions prepared. First off, we asked Grabs already, but do you kind of just have to sit there and always take it when these things happen? Because last year, you know, you got perks in the bottom lane and then now it was caps. How much are you consulted in this whole thing? Oh, I'm all up for it. Like, I'm oh. really, I'm, I'm enjoying this, you know? Yes. Yeah. Every time 
I play with someone else, they always have like new stuff to bring, so I can also learn from them. And with perks and caps, they're also a difference that they're mid laner, so they can play more champions. And caps especially, he plays everything. He played some Wukong mid, some Kane mid, you know. <laughs> so we're trying a lot of stuff in solo queue that we're about to bring out soon TM. Uh -huh. But right now we're just like playing some AD carries, just because, well, Santa Fe was a pretty OP, and then, yeah, we didn't really practice that much of the other stuff. Keeping it simple. So, yeah. Like... <laughs> I need to ask, Mickey. You've played with AD carries, and yeah. you've played with mid laners that turn into AD carries. What is like the biggest underlying difference? Champion pool. Okay. I think that's the biggest one. How about like TPs, the way they use TPs, maybe corrupting potions, Approach, something like, like that? Approach, like, really. focus versus I think it's a champion pool. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. So are the mid as focused, like, I'm really lane about the last hit, or like, are the minions and the lane, or are they more focused on where they can go after that or during? Uh, honestly, like, just laning-wise, I didn't see that much of a difference playing with ADs or mid laners. Like, because usually we just play AD carries anyway, and it's kind of last hitting, and then if we see like opportunities, then we go for them. I guess mid laners look, tend to look for more opportunities themselves uh -huh. than AD carry mains. Like, for example, when you play Zaya, you can look for a root with your feathers, you can like set something up. So I think, yeah, mid laners tend to look for more opportunities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, something that I've noticed is usually with mid laners. Like, especially with perks, I think he understood how to farm side lane better and how to take golems over and over yeah. and how he managed the wave. And also what I loved about perks when he was playing ADC was how he used TP. Because I think when TP became the meta down in bottom lane, I think a lot of AD carries were like, okay, I base now and TP back and there was nothing else to it. And I saw perks using it to get advantage as you would do in mid or in top, which you kind of are forced to do. Yeah. In terms of wave management, I, I just imagine mid laners just being better at it. That's true, yeah. I also Patrick did the TP top today, which was, and then we were joking that it's a uh, Umayyan TP. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a Umayyan TP. Umayyan TP is hilarious. Uh, do you think it's a testament to kind of your own strength as a support that you can slot these different players in and of like, because it's a very hard thing the synergy to build up with your marksman or with your AD carry in the bot lane. It's not just for everybody to just slot different people into that role. I think it's honestly not that difficult because all the players that I play are very good, yeah. like individually. So I don't really have much work to do. Um, usually we just like discuss how matchup should go or yeah. I mean, I don't think I'm like, do, I'm, I don't think I'm like teaching them like some crazy <laughs> lane stuff, you know, it's just yeah. like, we just play the lane and then we go over the replay and say, yeah, we could do this differently, we could do that differently. But yeah, usually it's more like a mutual kind of talk, I guess. I'm not like teaching anyone anything, so yeah. Uh -huh. I see, um, do you think that would you think that you lose some of your kind of improvement? Because like you worked so hard on, on the perk synergy in the bot lane and kind of that, and we know that duos who play together for a long time, they can just keep growing and hit that ceiling. Um, do you think there's a risk that maybe you cut that short to kind of try this new thing? And if so, uh, how are you planning to remedy that? Mm, I don't think there's like any danger to mm -hmm. it. I mean. As me and Caps are both very aggressive players, there's a danger that we will int like we did for the past <laughs> uh -huh. two days. We kind of ran it. Um, but I think it's really fun to just like have something to work on and keep learning something. Um, and then just discuss a lot of different like strategies or how we want to play lane or just like matchups. And yeah, pretty much. Cool. Uh, at this point in your career where you've played for like such a long time and is always at a very high level, or not a long time, let's say, you have a lot of years still to go, of course, <laughs> and you play at a high level. Um, in terms of mechanics, do you still do specific exercises or like practice tool to test your mechanics specifically? <laughs> no, I just play solo queue. Completely, solo queue. it's just so. Or is Where's that the bard, man? Yeah. Where's I, the bard? I was play, practicing in solo queue, and if someone blinds Big Brown today, I was about to take it. I've seen it, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, they didn't there's, some, there's some wacky stuff in your uh, in your solo queue. Oh yeah, your... there's a lot of wacky stuff. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's everything. Um, but on stage, you kind of have to do what the team yeah, needs anyway. Yeah, on stage, anyway. I'm just not a slow on a main. I yeah, guess. exactly. Or I can, but yeah. Now there's more people in the data, I heard, in the coaching crew. So maybe someone sticks up for you and is like, you know, Mickey's played all these things. <laughs> the problem is queue. whenever like you want to bring up something, for example, yeah, Bart, my team will just say, yeah, but Nautilus Leona are both open, so, you know, we just go for Nautilus Leona. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, sure. But yesterday, I could have probably played Bayer, but, you know, Nautilus was open, so. How about today? Did, they, did your team tell you to pick Brom or was it Raka 100%? Because it was like MF 
Orn, Jarvan. No, we were planning to play as Arakan. Okay, okay, okay. Because Brom looked juicy, and I was like, I imagined your voice in my head. No, 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 no. Rakan is way more fun than a Brom. <laughs> it is yeah. more fun as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you jealous of the the marksmen that they get all these cool champions like Senna came yeah. out and Felix came out and Actually, you're like, come on. I was really hyped for Senna because she was supposed to be a support, <laughs> yeah. but I, how how is like ADK role is so imbalanced, like it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they just steal every champion. Upset said it was in a good place. Do you think ADC is a bit overpowered or? Uh, just the two champions, just yeah, Senna and Filius. Yeah, but Makes overall, sense. overall I think Nothing's it's fine. stopping you from taking Senna and support, as support, though. It's horrible. Are uh, your team stopping you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and yeah. And it's horrible at stopping is, you. <laughs> they are stopping me from picking Senna support, because then it's just a free lose. Uh, yeah. yeah, well, we'll see. Hopefully we get to see some of your uh, wacky stuff. Maybe next week, because then Caps will be tested uh, against the limit, against Upset and Origin oh, in wow. our match of the week. Ooh. Yeah, and Origin also coming off a 2-0 week. They look... Quite, quite strong. Yamato, how do you think these two are going to match up and how do you think G2 is going to match up versus Origin on fire? Honestly, I get the feeling that with Origin, even though their mid game has been relatively slow, I am worried that if they get a lead against you guys, that they will not throw it away. Why are you worried? Well, <laughs> for us. it's my, bo uh, it's, it's it's my boy Mickey. You know? It's my boy Wick Mickey. No, but I think it's going to be a great matchup. I think if you guys clean up your early game, maybe you can get away with something, but they've been very accurate in identifying how to uh, to impact the early game, like today with the Leblanc and just making sure, looking at enemy team. They have Renekton, they have Rise. If we win split, we're going to just win the game. Leblanc getting ahead and then boom. I thought that was really, really nice. Steve. You guys in mid to late game, really, really nice. But with um, deficits, I'm worried for you guys. Yeah, I mean, it could be rough. They're a pretty good team as far as I've watched. But uh, Kevin does say that Upset has a like a mental disadvantage going up against him. <laughs> he always ends against him like when he play bot lane. I still remember one time I was playing duo with Upset, we played against Caps, and Caps was really smurfing on us. So I think Upset does have like a mental disadvantage. Okay. He has a mental disadvantage versus G2 or versus, versus Caps? Caps? Versus, versus Caps' bot lane. Caps. <laughs> Caps' bot lane. It's I think that makes for sense. <laughs> I mean, in general, it was the same with kind of perks. Like, if you are a lifelong AD carry, and then you go up against these That's guys true, yeah. who just come and like, they step into the bot That's lane true, and yeah. smack you around, <laughs> there's nothing worse for your mental, for your mental edge. It's true. Yeah. You're looking very intently at Caps' photo. Yeah, yeah. It's just <laughs> That's a cool watch as well. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's it's just, I feel like the timing for the swap is perfect. That's how I look at Caps. You know, the, the whole champion pool on bottom is different. And today when you guys looked in Zaya, I was like, is this the moment? He's going back into the mid lane and I was like, no, okay. Nope. <laughs> They're saving it. They're saving, They're saving it. it. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Um, what do you think of Destiny? Um, I think he was playing pretty well, like uh, on stage. Um, from when I played against him in solo queue and scrims, he was like fine, but on stage he was actually playing really well. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to next week. And yeah, pretty good for OPL import. <laughs> yeah, I mean, first of his kind, there's going to be so many more. Get ready. Uh, maybe not, who knows. Um, who do you see as competitors for this season? Is Origin, I guess they're probably part of it, but who would you see as like your biggest I mean, competitors? Yeah, I mean, I guess the top four teams would probably be Fnatic, Rogue, and. OG. So, yeah, I guess those three teams. I like that you're also saying Rogue because our analysts have been saying it and we've heard it on social as well. What do you think makes Rogue a top four candidate? Mm, I think they just play really well as a team. Like, from when we scrim them, they move very well around the map and they also just upgraded AD carry. Mm -hmm. I think Hans is really good. Um, so now their laning phase is also strong compared to last year. Um, <laughs> so it's for sure hard to play, I guess. <laughs> See what you did there? <laughs> Um, when it comes to how you approach the year, last year it was so, so busy for G2 because you kept winning, so you also had to go to MSI, you know, win that, do press conferences. But in general, it was like super busy and you didn't really get a break. Has that changed your outlook as to this year? Are there more breaks planned in? Is there a difference in focus? Yeah, I think we might just take like more breaks like in, in between the weeks. Because mm -hmm. before we did like a, a break and then we just played like for like a whole two months or something yeah. like that. But we're probably just going to have like breaks in between those two months, I guess. Okay, makes sense. Yamato, what would you recommend for G2? Honestly, I just want you guys to, you know, take it slow in spring and then make sure that you're set up in a way that when you come into summer that you don't need to take a break. Because MSI, honestly, it's cool and all. But if you yeah. want to win the World Championship, I don't think you can slow down in summer. And I think the sloppiness and the lack of discipline definitely show that the world's because I think you guys, Correct me if I'm wrong, is I think you guys peaked 
during you know the playoffs and during the MSI over in spring because you guys yeah. came in you know so hard in the paint because you had so much to prove like you came off of misfits that was that was kind of a <laughs> disaster you know caps <laughs> yeah. from fanatic coming into mid lane <laughs> and then perks moving to AD carry has to there was so much to prove and i think you guys you're instantly when you guys beat origin i was like these guys are going to win MSI easy even I though it was prediction. dumb i saw the prediction solid prediction <laughs> and then summer you guys i think you guys took it slow yeah yeah, it was a bit more relaxed, let's say. We were like, so after we got from MSI, we were expecting to like lose a few games because usually teams that come from MSI just like, because uh, they're a patch behind, right? Mm. So they usually lo lose a few games, but we just kept winning. So we we're like, okay, I guess we're just chilling throughout the summer. <laughs> but honestly, there just wasn't enough of good teams to punish us. Like Fnatic was really close and they were good. But yeah, only after we played the Griffin, we kind of realized how bad, or actually even screaming, I guess the, the Asian teams were like, yeah, a bit rough. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you can't make that decision now and it's like a team-wide thing, but it was the year that everyone didn't go anywhere else to boot camp, right? You guys didn't go to China, you didn't go no. to Korea to boot camp. If it was up to you, what would you prefer? Hmm, I'm not sure. Um, I would probably prefer to play Korean solo queue, but then again, we would have to go back and forth, so maybe jet lag would be annoying. Um, so the world in is in China, so yeah. I mean, oh yeah, for this year, yeah. yeah. But like for last year, in hindsight, it would be better to go to like uh, somewhere else to boot camp. Mm -hmm. But in it made sense to stay in Europe. But yeah, for this year, for sure, we're probably gonna go to China or something. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Um, Yamato, shine your light on the first week of the LEC. Make some bold statements. Bold statements. Origin looks like the best team. I'm sorry, Mickey. Holy. That's, that's not that crazy. That's not that crazy. <laughs> well, I'm trying to find crazy, but honestly, it's a... like the top four teams. Well, you said top four, so an early two others in the, yeah. Yeah, it's like top four was predicted, and it seems like, you know, everything is falling where it's supposed to fall. I had higher hopes for Schalke, honestly. Yeah. I thought they would start out, you know, uh, in a good way because they would have like a very basic and simple way of playing the game, like through bot ganking bot and then just try and kind of snowball but uh, that didn't happen are you worried for them Honestly, um, with I'm that team configuration super worried super worried because i thought this was the type of team start good and then everyone figures them out ban this champion ban this champion and then it's over but uh, in terms of uh, their draft and in terms of uh, the champion pool i feel like already they have some weaknesses no Aphelios, no senna what's going on there with with forgiven uh, uh, top lane, the Renekton was picked today. I think no one in Europe should be allowed to pick Renekton, honestly. I think yeah, Renekton is fair. for, for LPL <laughs> and maybe some Korean top laners, but in Europe, it just doesn't Why? work. It's just, you useless. need to snowball. <laughs> you need to snowball, and if you don't snowball, it's going to be useless. Like also, if you're, Spear yeah. Surgeon got removed, so the champ is a lot worse than it used to be. Because yeah. before, you, when you got Spear Surgeon, you were actually strong for like a long period of time. But now it's just like... Yeah, you really need a really hard snowball. For sure, for sure. Like LPL win ratio is still pretty good. I think it was like 11-4 or something. So that's like, that's why I was like, okay, maybe Renekton is okay. But in Europe, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Pick Orn, yes. Uh, yeah. Aatrox, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meta-wise, Mickey, things have been going pretty slow. Uh, there's, of course, a lot of reasons in the patches for that, but also perhaps teams taking it a bit careful because it's the first weeks. Um, how do you see the meta evolving in the next couple of weeks? Mm. I think it's gonna probably stay pretty similar. I mean, I guess Crit is getting nerfed on the next patch, so mm -hmm. maybe, and uh, Lulu got buffed. So we see some Lulu Kogmo. Oh, or, uh, some, <laughs> great. Yeah, non Crit AD carries, because Crit got a little bit nerfed. And Rasmus is saying that Crit, crit champs are unplayable now, so he has to like play other stuff, maybe some Vayne, maybe oh. some, yeah, Ooh. something crazy. BT Draven. Spilling the beans yeah. here. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, what else is there? Senna I guess Senna is probably still OP, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Nautilus got nerfed, but it's still OP. <laughs> so we're probably going to say pretty similar. Mm -hmm. Cool. We'll see. Uh, we hope that the game pace picks up, but it was the case already today in your game and the game before that did go a bit faster. We'll see. But next Friday, the LEC returns with five more games, starting with Origin versus Rogue. Um, Ooh, well, we're talking so much about the match of the week, Origin versus G2, but what if Rogue does it? They can, Imato. Honestly, it's a possibility. It's a possibility. The, the, the main strength Origin had coming into uh, this week, I feel like they had a very good grasp of draft. They picked Senna Nautilus. That's really, really nice. What is happening over there? It, it sounds like unicorn chance, but that's love. impossible. Are we in Russia? What's happening? That's impossible. <laughs> Sorry to cut off your yeah, point. Origin. Uh, they picked Zyra Khan. Love it. I think they inspired you guys, but you don't need to comment. Uh, this Zyra is okay. Khan. No, no, but, you, but he keeps going on about this. He's like, well, Zyra Khan is always good and teams always forget 
about it. Yeah, and now they picked it. Like, it it's, gets nerfed. It's not it rocket science. Good. <laughs> yeah, it is always good. But I, yeah. I love how like hung up you are. And it's like, oh, Cause, they cause, picked Tyra. Because I've been there so many times. I have, a, have bot lanes like, eh, Leona counters it. We can just pick Leona, <laughs> pick Ezreal. That's a good name. And it's like, <laughs> eventually, you just reach playoffs and you realize we've been banning Zaya the whole season because there's Fnatic and then there's G2. They're just so good at it. And then you're left there with your with your pants down and it just blows, <laughs> you know? So now I think I like that teams are playing Zara Khan early and teaching people the ways. On that note and that mental image, uh, we're going <laughs> to say bye-bye for the first week of the LEC. Thank you so much, Mickey. Congratulations. So we'll see you next week. Thank you, Yamato. Great first week on the broadcast. And if you missed any of the action, be sure to tune into our rebroadcast starting right after the opening day of the LCS. We're going to be back Friday with more action on the Rift. See you then. Are we waving? Okay. We, you can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waving. <laughs>